How's everybody doing? I just wanted to re-show you guys my court papers since uh, you guys couldn't see it when I was out on the reservation doing a live on it and it was buffering. You guys couldn't see the paperwork at all. But this is the date that uh, the incident happened, 12-8-21. Uh, about my criminal trespass and resisting arrest. Yeah, I was incarcerated for about three, four hours. That's when they told me I, I had to. The thing I, the, the only way they would release me is uh, take a breathalyzer test. If I pass that and I'm good to go, they would release me, which I thought it was very discriminating because there was no alcohol involved at all. And this is a, they sent me a new court date on a Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. Nothing, uh, this is all over the phone. Uh, nothing happened there. And uh, my, another court date on the 3rd, 2022, May. That's when I had a public attorney by the name of Arthur Hernandez out of uh, Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And this is when he was telling me that uh, officers don't like to bring witnesses to court and stuff like this. And that's what he asked for. But for some reason, not really knowing why, he went and bailed on me. Telling me that uh, I was going to get get a new public attorney. It's another court date on May 12th, 2022. That's, uh, Arthur Hernandez was still my public attorney and he asked for the witnesses and the body cams. That's when he told me that, uh, I was going to get a new public attorney which was uh, John Huntley. And I get this in the mail. Order dismissing criminal complaint. But this is uh, without prejudice, the complaint. May be refiled if the complaint is refiled. Defendant shall prominently respond to any further communication from the court concerning this matter. Pat Cordell is the judge. But then a week later, the deputy, D, not deputy, D, uh, Jonathan Gonzalez, deputy Gonzalez, he refiled the complaint again on my criminal trespass and resisting arrest. And uh, Deputy D. Smith was involved in the, the arrest. He's the one that told uh, Jonathan Gonzalez to, I don't know, tackle me. All he did is tell him to get me, and I was still filming. But when I was still filming, that's when he went and came and grabbed at me. My phone went flying and threw me to the ground, twisted my arm. So, went back to court on Tuesday, June 28, 2022. This is when uh, my public attorney, John Huntley, asked for their body cams and what uh, Jonathan Gonzalez said he'll give them right over. Then we set another court date on Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. And again, no body cams or nothing. So my public attorney, John Huntley, asked for body cams again and witnesses to, witnesses to be there this time. And again, John uh, Jonathan Gonzalez said he'll give him right over. Then went back to court on... 
September 15th, 2022. Mike Public Attorney was telling me that, that they're still not giving over their, the, the body cameras. Again, asked for body cameras and witnesses to be at the jury trial. And again, Jonathan Gonzalez said he'll hand them right over the body cameras. Then I talked to um, lead sheriff, asked him if we can sit down and have counsel about my criminal trespass and resisting arrest. But what he told me is that he didn't want to do anything, talk about it until my case was over with. I thought he would at least, uh, you know, listen to me and stuff like that. But it actually turned on me. What he told me is, you know, Shane Ferrari is what, what the, the lead sheriff, it's his name, Shane Ferrari. And what he told me is that I am going to be charged with criminal trespass and resisting arrest. And it sounds like he already knows what's going to happen, you know. And this is when I got the paperwork. I mean, the, the new, uh, got this in the, in the mail. And this is when they finally got a, a prosecutor by the name of Jade Alexa Reyes. As you can see, oh my... Court dates, they don't have no prosecutor. No prosecutor there. No prosecutor there. No prosecutor there. Here. And here. So this is a, my new court date was on October uh, 14th, but that's uh, my, I talk, I call my, my public attorney, John Huntley, on the 3rd of October, and I asked him what's going on, and he told me they're still not giving up their body cameras, you know, because I never res resisted arrest at all, I was tackled to the ground, yeah, after uh Lead Sheriff Shane, Shane Ferrari told me that I was going to be charged with criminal trespass and resisted arrest. That's when they finally got a prosecutor by the name of Jade Alexa Reyes. And like I said, uh, Jonathan Gonzalez is a, says that he's the arresting officer, but uh, Deputy D. Smith was involved with the. He arrested me, and I talked to him two months prior to all of this, letting him know that there was, there was unprofessional government workers and. And that's taking New Mexico to dispatchers. And he told me that he's going to go see if he can pull a few strings. Which I, I don't know what that meant, but that's what he told me. I guess go find out what's going on, seeing how come they're unprofessional. I don't know. So, even, I've even asked for body cameras myself. I filled it out online and nothing to this day. And the uh, main reason I went down to um, the Aztec New Mexico Public Defender's Office is because uh, Sarah E. Phil was very unprofessional over the phone. Asked her if she knew what a First Amendment audit was, freedom of press. She unprofessionally started telling me that it was a joke. It was all in my head and I was watching too much TV. You know, she's saying that the Constitution was a joke. She was acting unprofessional in front of the employees that were working under her in the office that day. You know, she was laughing along with uh, the employees that were in the Aztec New Mexico Public Defenders on 12 8 21. I tried to tell her to be professional. She told me to go ahead and do whatever I had to. I told her I'd been talking with Deputy D. Smith about the First Amendment and the unprofessionalism that's going on in these government buildings. She told me that Deputy D. Smith is a good friend of hers. Then she hung up the phone on me. That's when I decided to do the do the First Amendment on the public defender office at Aztec, New Mexico. 
went to went down there the first time, did an audit, you know. Uh, she was hiding in the back. She sent a public employee that works under her, you know, to come speak to me. Then on 12 8 21, I called to the Aztec Public Defender's Office again. Asked for the supervisor that oversees Sarah E. Field. The young lady that answered the phone put me on a line knowing no one was going to answer. And I called back again. You know, the, the same young lady answered the phone. I told her I needed to talk to someone in charge at the moment. That's when she hung up the phone on me. And that's when I went back down to, that's when I went to the public defender's office again to redress my grievances under the Constitution, the First Amendment. And that's when uh, Sarah E. Field got her feelings hurt. You know, I tried asking for her name. She never gave it. Then she decided to violate my rights and call the Sheriff's Department on me. What was uh, surprising is she called her best friend. A good friend, her good friend, she called him, Deputy Smith. You know, told him that she wanted me trespass. That's when Jonathan Gonzalez showed up. Never resisted arrest at all. You know, Deputy Smith told Jonathan Gonzalez to tackle me. My phone went flying. I was thrown to the ground, arrested for criminal trespass and resisting arrest. Then right after I was uh, thrown to the ground and arrested, Lieutenant J. Sherman came over asked him if I was asking me if I was hurt and I, I told him I was thrown to the ground but I couldn't feel nothing at the time you know all that adrenaline that's when uh Lieutenant Jay Sherman you know told him I told him I never resisted arrest that's when he told me it's up to him to de determine if I resisted arrest or if the arrest was uh lawful And he said he was going to take a look at the Deputy Smith and Jonathan Gonzalez's body cameras. And this is, uh, I still need to get, I forgot all about telling my public attorney, I need to tell my public attorney that I need Lieutenant J. Sherman's uh, body uh, camera. Because he told me I couldn't, you know, just walk around and film. See, this here is, uh, this is what it says on the complaint from the disciplinary board out of, uh, Owl Creek in New Mexico. Dear Mr. Chi, the Office of Disciplinary Council has investigated your complaint against Sarah E. Field. We found insufficient evidence to support allegations that she has violated the rules of professional conduct. You are not a client of Mrs. Field. Instead, you describe yourself as a First Amendment auditor, which Wikipedia describes as follows. The First Amendment audits are largely American social movement that usually involves photographing or filming from public space. It is often categorized by its practitioner, known as auditors, in activism and citizen journalism and the test of constitutional rights, in particular the right to photograph and video record in public space. Auditors believe that the movement promotes transparency and open government. In this guy, she conducted what you call the First Amendment audit of the Aztec Public, De Public Defender's Office, which of, of which Mrs. Fields is the managing attorney. You allege that Mrs. Fields failed to cooperate and that she called the sheriff's office, which resulted in your arrest for criminal misdemeanor charges against you. You seem to allege that Mrs. Fields should have allowed you full access. Never did. Never asked her for full access. That's where she's lying again. To the office and should have not called the law enforcement. Mrs. Fields responded that she attempted to help you to avail, to no avail, that she refused to allow you to video the office as confidential materials were in sight and that you refused to leave after she asked you we have no evidence that she violated the rules of professional conduct. Thus, the disciplinary board will take no further action if you do not understand the reasons for this dismissal and wish to have the decisions to dismiss this complaint reviewed by the chair of the disciplinary board. 
You may submit a written request for the review to this office if the chair feels. The additional investigation is warranted. She will order that the file be reopened for the purpose that chair authority does not, however, extend a ordering that disciplinary action be, be taken. Sincerely, Jane Gain, Assistant Disciplinary Counsel. Yeah, so I thought I'd just give you guys a better view of all my court dates and my paperwork because, like I said, on the reservation when I did the live, you guys you guys couldn't see all this at all. Yeah, so then, you know, like I said, there's no prosecutors and it's uh, it's terrible, you know. I'm still auditing. I went to Bloomfield, uh, New Mexico. I did some audits there. And same thing, you know. It's these three towns, Aztec, New Mexico, Farmington, New Mexico, and Bloomfield, New Mexico, they all work together. And then there's a, a man from here, from uh, Farmington, New Mexico, who was uh, involved with the... He was charged for a lead role in the Capitol riot. The complaint says he also sent videos of himself at the riot to investigate. Is in federal court today facing charges for his alleged involvement in the riot at the U.S. Capitol. According to a criminal complaint, the FBI was able to identify Sean Bradley Weitzman from a picture posted to Facebook that tagged Weitzman's Instagram account. The complaint also says a few days later in a recorded video, Weitzman admitted to being at the riot. The complaint says he also sent videos of himself at the riot to investigators. After today's court hearing, Weitzman could be sent back to D.C. Well, that's a... Uh, that's uh, a man that was uh, at the capital of that riot that happened. So, yeah, these guys are... You know, a lot of uh, Trump supporters here, stuff like that. I, I just, yeah, I thought I'd just inform you guys about my, because I, I wanted you guys to see my, my situation on my court clear than I did out there live on the reservation. So, okay, guys, you know, um, out. You guys have a good one.